<laughs> Maybe we just start. <laughs> so we have Kagan Dunlap here today. I'm gonna give him a second to tell you who he is and what he does. So yeah, I'm Kagan Dunlap. I uh, kind of, I mean, I do the social media stuff like you do, you know. You know, still, still in the Marine Corps, still, you know, doing that full time, and then doing the social media stuff on the side, and just uh, trying to raise awareness about things that are important to our community and uh, build camaraderie and post stuff that are, you know, educational videos and post stuff that's like teaches people things about uh, current events, current affairs, uh, weapon systems, uh, history, all kinds of stuff. So that's kind of pretty much summarize mostly what I do. Yeah. I just, yeah, I, mean, I pretty much do, you know, all the same social media stuff, just use it as a tool to have a positive impact on the community that we have, you know, the community we're a part of and hopefully, and other communities too. Like right now we've got the disaster relief going on and really pushing hard for that. Cause that's a pretty uh, big deal. And I'm from North Carolina from the Western part of the state. So I have a lot of friends up there. So that's like a big thing that I've been working on over the past few days since we've been here at the military influencer conference in Atlanta, Georgia. And, uh, you know, do a lot of work with a bunch of different folks in the industry and in the community. And that's kind of like, why I got started was to have a positive impact on people, really. Do, speaking about North Carolina specifically, do you think you've seen a boost in aid from the community, from outside communities like other states? Like, are there, is there still a need for, for that help, or are they still kind of... Oh, no, there's definitely a need for help, for sure, everywhere. I mean, I've been trying to, like, link as many people up as possible over the past few days to, you know, help people get the because I can't be there in person. So the best I can do is at least get word out about it and like help coordinate like people to link up or like, Hey, here's some points of contact to reach out to. Here are some organizations that are doing good things to help the community that are distributing supplies, water, food, clothes, shelter, uh, diapers, baby wipes, yeah. toiletries, things like that. And there's, I got a lot of friends that are up there right now doing work actively right now while we're, while we're here. Um, just keep talking about it and, getting the word out. I mean, I know the government's trying to get their, get their people all up there so they can start like actually activating their relief efforts as well. But in the meantime, it's kind of like on the local communities to organize in a way that's effective and safe and professional to help the people that are affected by this whole thing, you know? Before we get to the military questions, I was looking on your LinkedIn and it said that you, when I was in high school, you were a bouncer. It was, it when says in bouncer. School? Yeah. In like 2007 or 8? Oh, or no, 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 no. There's no way. It must have been, it may have been wrong, or maybe you just saw a different number or something. The 2000... I, mean, I can see you as a bouncer, though. Yeah, no, I was a bouncer at a bar when I was in college for like a year or two, just in UN, at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, I was active duty at the time. I was yeah. just, uh, you know, because I was in a, what the Army's, so the Army has their green to gold program, and mm -hmm. we have a program that's similar to it called the Marine Corps enlisted commissioning education program and while i was on that program i was a full-time student at unc chapel hill and active duty and i just got a job as a bouncer at a bar that was local to the town to help kind of meet people and network a little bit and uh i just did that for a couple of years while i was at college just as a side job to make some extra money you know that was pretty much that's pretty much why was I did it fun that. yeah it was fun i mean i didn't really have to do anything too crazy. I mean, most people aren't really acting nuts out there. There's like onesies yeah. and twosies here and there. Maybe somebody gets too intoxicated and they do something dumb, but uh, it was fun. I met a lot of people and, you know, made a lot of connections with a lot of folks. I mean, I met some, I met, I, I met, became pretty good friends with a guy that was a Marine that was also like the head bouncer for the bar was, uh, he was a prior uh, supply Marine actually. And he was huge, just this gigantic <laughs> man. And uh, he and I ended up working out together a whole lot throughout the whole pandemic and everything, which was pretty cool. So that's really cool. Yeah. So how long have you been in the Marine Corps? Um, for almost 11 years now. And why the Marine Corps? Like specifically, if there's any, even any. Well, I mean, why. it really, you know, I tried to get in the army first, actually, to be honest with you, I tried doing the army first, but kept getting turned down. It took me seven years to get into the military because I was kind of a troublemaker when I was younger and it just took me a very long time to get in. Yeah. Because uh, the time that I started trying to apply, like they had just passed sequestration, um, like 2008 time yeah. frame. So they were drawing down and they were cutting the military budget a lot. And so there just wasn't as much of a need. They were forcing a lot of people out. 
Um, so I couldn't get the waivers that I needed. And I kept trying and kept trying and kept trying until I finally got in 2014 or 2013 was when I actually signed my contract and I went to recruit training in 2014. And, um, yeah, pretty much from there on, I've been doing it, you know. How, how do you balance, you know, being a husband, being a commission officer, because you're a, a, you're a lieutenant, but in the, yeah. in the Marine Corps, that's like what a captain does. Like you're a company commander, right? I was a company commander for about 11 months. Um, not anymore. Now I'm doing actual supply chain management operations, but I was doing, you know, I was a company commander for 11 months, and before that I was on a... I did an individual augment to uh, the combined joint task force mm. out in um, CENTCOM. And so I did six months out there uh, working with various organizations. And, you know, that was the f- pretty much right when I got to the fleet or got back to the fleet. That's kind of like how, yeah. how things kind of went. So how do you think you manage that plus your social media and all the videos you, you're putting out and the amount of reach you have? Like I, I spoke to somebody, and I won't name who it was, but you know who it is. And I said, so-and-so, how do you manage being a this and a content creator? And he yeah. was like, Johnny, I do one of them really, really good, and I do the other one very terribly. Yeah. So do you, do you find do you find it hard to have a balance of, you want to dedicate yourself to social media, you want to be set a good example online, but also you have Marines to take care of and you have an organization to help run? Yeah, it is a very hard balancing act. Um, the big thing for me is... Uh, my schedule is very filled. I don't, so the only way I have time for this is because I don't hang out with people. I don't do anything extracurricular. Well, I do a lot of extracurricular stuff, but I don't like hang out with friends. I don't really like just chill and play video games. Um, I, I mean, if I do play video games, it's while I'm streaming. So it's yeah. like I can rationalize not. So you're still working. I, it's still technically working, you know. Yeah. Uh, but. You know, I, I have a very strict schedule. I get up every morning at 4.45. I shave. I brush my teeth. I go downstairs. I eat breakfast. I come back up. I work for an hour. I usually make all the videos for the day within that hour somehow. And then I leave to go to work at like 6.45. And then I go to work. And while I'm at work, like I, usually I'll show up before everybody. I'll post one of the videos. And then I'll go the rest of the time between lunch focused on just work. Mm-hmm. Like like what what I'm supposed to be doing at work, which is actually working. And that's my main focus because that has to take priority over everything. And then usually I try to go work out like during the middle of the day. Maybe I'll post another video that I had recorded that morning at five at, in the middle of the day. Right. And then um, when I get back from working out, I go back to work and I get back into work. So like when I'm at work, I am working, like working, working. <laughs> And then when I go home, usually before I leave, I might post one one more video somehow from my like before I leave the shop for the day after everyone else has left, or like right before everybody leaves. And then um, I typically will leave. My schedule is like very very meticulous, very uh, repetitive. But I'll leave. I'll go straight to the gym. I'll sit in the sauna for twenty minutes, and then I'll go get some food, and then I'll go back home. I'll shower change and then I'll work the rest of the night until 9 30 at night usually and then I stop what I'm doing and I go to bed and then I get up the next day and start the whole thing all over again Um, and that's every single day day in and day out so I'm not like the only time I'm really socializing with people like like recreationally in any way is like when I'm on leave to go out to do work somewhere else so it's not really recreational it is recreational because it's a lot of it's fun like working with people in the community is fun and i enjoy it and i love doing the networking piece i love meeting people i love talking to people i love uh, getting to travel around and engage with different people that do different things in different organizations that are benefiting the community or working with the community in some way whether it be like firearms manufacturers or uh, folks that run philanthropy organizations or events that are for veterans or active duty um you know but it's all it always goes back to like, it is technically work if you want to call it that, because like I'm trying to build a platform and build a brand so that eventually when I retire, I can go full time working for, for myself and Mm -hmm. just continue to do this stuff where I raise awareness about things that that are pertinent to the community, where I talk to people in the community about issues and things going on and their experiences and, or raising money for something that happened or, you know, right. Like just, communicating and networking with people and I mean I enjoy it and that's why I keep doing that's why my that's why I haven't gotten burnt out because I keep enjoying what I'm doing and 
I think if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't keep doing it probably. Yeah, but that's it's, fair. It is a lot of work. And so it takes a lot of dedication and a lot of consistency. And it's very hard to do everything by myself because I don't have like a big team. I have like editors and stuff like that, but that's pretty much it. The yeah. only people that I like contract out are like editing teams and that's it. Other than yeah. that, I do most of the short, like all the short form stuff I edit myself. Yeah, me um, too. And all of the long form I usually, for the most part, send off to people to take care of for me because I just don't have the time um, to learn how to do it or the time to dedicate towards doing it. Yeah, so. but that's hours saved for you. Yeah, sending that, it off to an editor. that I spend on other stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like the, the short form stuff, you know, some people have approached me, they're like, hey, I'll edit your stuff. And I was like, okay, uh, we'll give it a shot. And I sent it to them. And I'm like, okay, in, in that time, I could have filmed and edited and posted a few short form videos yeah. like it's just it's, it's easy, easy to film and edit a short form video that's a minute long yeah. or a minute and a half long that's that's easy i can do that usually i've gotten pretty good at it i can crank out like two pretty well well two or three pretty well edited short form videos in an hour yeah you know and and have very good quality edited videos that have like information um, videos within the video, like uh, transitions or whatever, you know, like yeah. all that stuff. But so that that high op tempo of like how you're working right now, you feel that's it's sustainable right now, especially because you said you enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I that. mean, it is sustainable, but I have to take more time to relax because I don't take any time to decompress. And that's very hard. I would say that can I sustain it? Yes. Is it sustainable for most people? No. If I had a family, like if I had kids, right. there's no way I could do this the way that, the, not the rate that I'm doing that you're it. you're doing it now. Um, I would just have to scale it back a bit if I was going to, if like, you know, if I had kids or whatever. But for now, it works well enough where I'm able to perform well at work and take care of everything that needs to happen at work and that, and I can be focused at work on work. Right. Um, and then I have time to dedicate towards building the platforms and everything after before you know what does decompressing look like for you um you mentioned sitting in the sauna i remember i think you did a video and you said that you feel like everyone should go sit in the sauna for like 20 minutes every day or yeah. something for like t 10 days in a row or something yeah so. yeah sauna is like my best my happy place like i'm i actually got linked up with somebody that makes saunas and i'm gonna try to order one because like this dude makes these ones that are like you can plug them into a wall oh, well. rather like than inflatable or no a, like a wood one that you can plug into the wall and it's like a single person sauna that you can use at the house i could plug it in my garage yeah. and then be able to use the sauna at the house at the end of the night i would save some time from having to go to the gym i could just go get food come home work and then stop work at because i'd be i get home every day at like 6 or 7 p.m yeah and then i work for another two and a half hours but what i would probably do if i had a son at the house is you know come straight home or go like drive home get dinner work and then probably stop at like eight instead and then do the sauna and then shower and then get ready for bed you know probably be what i well, do but yeah, I recommend that to everybody. It's like a really good decompression yeah. thing because you like you can't do anything else when you're in the sauna, really, yeah, except can't. just sit there and hold on for dear life and <laughs> and kind of just like unwind. And I mean, you can't think of anything, so like my mind's constantly racing. So that's a a good way for me to kind of like cut loose from everything for a little bit and disconnect yeah. for a minute. I mean, if you don't mind me asking, like, what do you, what do you feel that your spouse feels about that schedule and like um, how it is now? Obviously, it's very hard because she's sacrificing a lot. You know, we don't really we get to spend some time together, like on the weekends, because she's always gone during the weekdays, so it doesn't affect her during the weekdays because right. she's in Charleston, South Carolina, during most weekdays. But um, when she comes home, I try to like a lot some time to spend with her. But I'm also working all weekend long because I can get a lot of my work done yeah. when I don't have to go to work that day. Oh, yeah. And I also go to the gym during the weekends too. We get to usually like spend bits and pieces of time while she's home for sure and like obviously she's here so we've been able to spend a little bit of time together here but it's you know she's she understands what i'm trying to do and she sees that i'm trying to have a good impact on people and she's supportive of it you know it's cool. uh, most none of the relationships i've ever been in would have ever worked out if i was <laughs> doing this kind of stuff because they'd be like you don't spend enough time with me um, and we don't, we don't spend enough time together. And that's a very hard thing to balance is like balancing your personal life and like, uh, a marriage with this stuff and also being full-time military is a very difficult yeah. thing to do. And I'm, for, I'm fortunate that my wife does the same kind of stuff. She does content too, but she also like runs her own business and all this other stuff. So she gets it better than a lot of folks might, you mm -hmm. know, some fortunate, 
like pretty fortunate in that aspect. Uh, Honestly, I, I feel it the same way. I'm it's like super blessed and fortunate to have my wife because not only you know she experiencing all this, like me doing this full time and you know being a senior non commissioned officer full time. You know she's also raising all four of our children. Yeah. And homeschooling them as well. Yeah. So I, I just couldn't imagine like That's a lot. You know, it, I could I could you know see the flip side of if I didn't have those children, I could get so much more done. Obviously. Yeah. Um, but I feel like now I, I, I try to treat social media, you know, it's a job, right? Like it's a business that some of us have created for ourselves. And um, I know some people do business hours and some people don't, but I also try to, in the best way, navigate how to still give them time and to make it to where they don't resent the business. Yeah. You know, like my kids, and I, I, know, I know you say you don't have children, but it's, I feel like it's kind of easy to understand like, a child might not understand why we're doing this. Yeah. And like, especially with your stuff, like you are constantly talking about relief efforts, like for the fire that happened in Georgia, um, everything in North Carolina, um, you know, bombs going off, this and that. Um, yeah. And so I can see you're, you're obviously very passionate. So I think that makes it, uh, that would make it easier for my spouse, I, I feel like. But yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's like, it, it just, it, it's hard juggling all these different things. And I, and I can say for a fact, it is not, uh, I have a very unhealthy work life balance. And I wouldn't recommend that schedule to anybody because it's not <laughs> sustainable for it's most for people, heart, like I yeah. said. Uh, not for the faint heart at all. I don't even know if it's good for me to be doing that much, honestly, because it's very exhausting and I am very tired all the time because I'm always working constantly 24 hours a day, pretty much. I might sleep yeah. like six, seven hours a night, you know. If I'm lucky, you know, the weekends I try to get a little bit more sleep because I'm able to sleep in and stuff and I'll sleep until eight if I go to bed at like, yeah. you know, 11, 12 at night. But, you know, Saturdays are very regimented for me as well because I yeah. like every Saturday morning I get up at eight, I go cook breakfast, I go get a haircut, I go to the gym. After the gym, I go get lunch. I come back after lunch and I usually try to uh, record some long form videos or stream for two hours because I try to stream at least once a week on the weekends because I'm trying to build that too. That's a separate yeah, thing. Yeah, Twitch and okay. Kick. I mean, I stream on everything on the weekends. It's like I do multi-streaming to, across all platforms. Like StreamYard or something, like go like after different. Like uh, Restream. Restream, yeah. Yeah, So, but that's like a separate endeavor on top of everything else that I'm doing too. But it's very difficult to juggle all this stuff. Yeah. And if I had kids, I wouldn't be able to do half the stuff because I, I wouldn't be able to yeah. like just let my wife take care of my kids full time and me not participate in the family at all, you know? Yeah. I would, I would, I'm going to have to like, when that time comes, like I'm going to have to reorganize and reorient how I do everything for sure. Yeah. It's, it's tough for me because in the beginning it was hard because, you know, I went just hard in the paint all in and, uh, you know, I try to help my wife understand like, this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. And I want to grow it as much as I can and then help the children understand. But luckily we've gotten to a place where like she gets it yeah. and she sees the benefits that, you know, the, the opportunities that are opening for, for me. So, do you get pushback from like your command, if not right now, like in the beginning when you started this uh, social media venture where they're like, what the hell are you doing? And why are you doing this? Um, I never really got a lot of pushback. I did have a period of time where I had this one person that was calling NCIS to complain about me or to say that I was doing stuff that was wrong over and over again for a while. Uh, eventually we found out who that was and we in like I made sure to inform it was somebody that was harassing my wife and was trying to get at my wife through me. Um, and eventually like I made sure to pass that information along to NCIS. So they were understanding that, Hey, uh, this is somebody that's getting harassed. It's yeah. not like a, there's no legitimate claims. Cause I wasn't violating any orders. I wasn't doing anything wrong. I wasn't doing anything that was against the UCMJ. Like, and I don't ever do that anyway. Like I am very clear and wide open with like, you know, who I am. And like when I post videos, like. I'm in the video, so I post it with the understanding that everybody's going to see it. And so, like, I know, like, hey, if you're doing something you're not supposed to do, don't post it, yeah. you know, and I just don't do stuff you're not supposed to do. And then if I don't, if I'm not breaking any laws or violating the UCMJ or violating the social media policy or violating the political activities orders or any of that stuff, then I'm fine. And I, I know what they are, and I'm, you know, I'm very intimately aware of, like, what I can and can't do, and I know what my left lateral limit, yeah. my right lateral limit is. And as long as I stay within that, then nobody can say anything to me because I'm not doing anything against any regulation or order or anything. Yeah. And, but regardless of that, like people, most of the people in my command that I've engaged with on this, like all of them really have been very supportive of me over, like overall, I haven't had any issues with people like harassing me because of that or like getting upset with me about it, you know, like 
um, I've been very fortunate in that in that sense. But I think it's because they understand that I'm doing stuff that's like helpful and I'm do doing stuff that's like positive. Yeah. And I'm trying to raise awareness about things that are important to the community. I'm trying to like I do a lot of philanthropy. I like to raise money for foundations. I like to raise money for things that are important. Like um, I like to do stuff that gives back. I like to help people. I'd like to have a positive impact on people. And that's like the whole reason I started this in the first place was so I could do that. So you're currently not dancing on TikTok. No, I don't do dances <laughs> on TikTok now. I can't do the TikTok dance stuff. I can't stuff. dance either. I, I mean, I've done a couple of dumb things, like, dancing-wise, where yeah. it's, like, there's one viral video that came out. Uh, I can't remember what the name of the song was, but it was some dumb dance that everybody did, and I did it once, and then I've never done it again, because I was like, yeah, I can't. I can't do that. I can't be doing that. It's not, it's not, not for me, you know? Yep. What would you tell a brand new Marine coming in, saying, uh, like, if they wanted advice on, like, how to grow their career, or like, hey, I'm not sure I want to stay in. Um, and so what would you tell them? And also, like, do you think it's harder now to be a Marine than it was when you first got in? I think it's just different. Like every branch, it's just different, you know. Um, Have you seen those generations? Like like in the Army, when I first got in, I got in 2013 on January 1st. Yeah. And soldiers back then were a total different breed than soldiers now. Yeah. Well, and I like, mean... Well, that's another big thing. Like, I came from the infantry, so I was in the infantry yeah. for my first five years in, and that community is very different from the community that I'm a part of now. Yeah. Uh, the culture is different. The type of people you see in those communities, those cultures are different than the culture I'm in now. The type of people you see are different. Um, I give, you know, here's the thing. I don't, I, I try to give good advice when I talk mm -hmm. to people about stuff, but I also don't just, like, offer a bunch of unwarranted advice all the time because people don't want to be force-fed yeah. advice like if if somebody came up to me and asked me for something like or asked me for advice on something i'll give them my personal opinion and my advice on it like i've had a few people approach me and ask me about the commissioning program that i did right. that had interest in it and I, I you know i was like yeah let's take some time and come into my office and i'll go over the stuff with you and i'll talk it talk through it with you so i can kind of give you my perspective and my experiences and recommendations for for filling the package out and i've tried to help a few people out doing that i mean even this past week i had somebody come in and talk to me about it um and so like anytime people want advice or want to talk to me like i'm an i'm a hundred percent willing to especially like if we're at work yeah come on talk yeah. come if we can find some time like i'll go to the gym later that day or i'll work out later i'll eat later like i'd rather you know, because, like, the only reason I'm still in the Marine Corps is because I like helping Marines and take care of Marines. Like, I didn't stay in because I make money. Like, I can make more money as a civilian, you know. Uh, I stayed in for the people. So if I can have a positive impact on somebody that's in and give them advice on, like, how to be successful in their career, whether it be doing your PME or uh, getting your annual training requirements done or getting good scores on the range or making sure you're physically fit so you can get better scores on your PT tests or, um, you know, getting a higher belt ranking on your Marine Corps martial arts program belt, like, or do whatever it is to like help advance their careers. Like I, I try to put that ahead of other things when I'm talking about recommendations for people. Cause I, I genuinely want to see these people get promoted. I want to see these Marines succeed. I want to see everyone win. Uh, and, and even people that are getting out, like I, you know, there's, especially as a company commander, like I would interview people before they're leaving the Marine Corps to see like what their plan is. Like, you know, cause at the end of the day, like I don't care if people stay in or get out like i just want them to be able to live a good life and be yeah. successful and make enough money to support a family and um, not be homeless and um, not have mental problems and like be well to do and and all that stuff so it's pretty much the same type of general advice that anybody would give i guess in a leadership position like and i'm always a you know that's what it's all about it's about helping marines take care of marines you yeah know? one uh one thing i tell my soldiers or <laughs> You know, when people ask me, like, what I do in the military, I feel like right now at this stage, I'm helping young men and women become better young men and women. Because obviously you're going to take the uniform off one day and you're going to have to contribute to society in some way. Mm -hmm. And if I feel like it's up to me, uh, well, I'm part of it. Like, I have to help that person figure out life after the army, yeah, after after the military. But Well, that's, yeah, that's and those are conversations that end up being had if they want to have them. Yeah. You know, I let people know, like, my door's always open. Like, if you want to ever talk about something, like, 
you know, they know that they can talk to me about it, you know? Yeah. And I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to belittle anyone or make fun of anyone or be toxic or any mm -hmm. of that stuff, you know? Any uh, final statements or anything you want to say to the audience? I don't know. I mean, I'm glad to be here. I appreciate you having me in here to do a quick interview. And, you know, I don't really have anything profound. Just don't. <laughs> That's okay. Don't, I mean, I would give you like a libo brief. Like, don't do anything dumb. Yeah, <laughs> You know, like social media is a tool like anything else, you know, use it for a positive manner. Try to find, find purpose in your life outside of just the military. I mean, the military gives people purpose sometimes. Yeah. That's a great place to find purpose if you didn't feel like you had it before. Uh, but there's always other places you can find purpose too that have to do with that same community and like find something that you can do that positively impacts other people's lives. Because honestly, that's the most gratifying thing for me is helping yep. people. Like that's where I get the most satisfaction is doing things that have a positive impact on people. Yeah. So I would recommend that and encourage that to anybody. Well, honestly, I, I really truly appreciate your time. I know it's valuable and it's sparse. So I, I truly appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, um, of course. Kagan's socials will be somewhere on the screen. Yeah. Please go follow him um, and subscribe to him. He's he's got a very he's got a big heart. Um, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, go do that. And if you want to see more of this stuff, just you know, subscribe, like, like, I'll subscribe, be here and leave a comment. <laughs> leave yeah. a comment. It's nice to leave comments. Yeah, do something. Um, yeah. So thanks again. Yeah, of course. Appreciate you having me.